I want to tell you guys about a fantastic natural hot spring that I visited in October. It's named Strawberry Hot Springs. It's near the town of Steamboat Springs, Colorado. If you're heading this way and looking for a few hours of rest and relaxation, I highly recommend you add this as a stop here itinerary. Hop into these 102 degree natural hot springs on top of an 8,000 foot mountain and relax your body. Be aware, depending on the season, this road can be treacherous. If the road is too wet or snowy for your two wheel drive vehicle, you can make a reservation with a shuttle van to get you up to the springs for about $35 per person with the hot springs included in that. Check out their website, strawberryhotsprings.com for pricing information through Sweet Pea Tours or Hot Spring Shuttle. The road up is interesting. It's unpaved, it's steep. In the winter, you would definitely have to use a four wheel drive. Parking is limited during the busy season, so you may have to wait for the attendant to show you where to park. Sometimes park cars will be parked on the side of the steep road that leads up to the hot springs. You can tell the owners take great care of this place. There's a series of pools that range in temperatures. The first couple pools are the hottest and then as you go down through the pools they cool down a little bit. It's a good idea to begin in the coolest pool and then work your way back up to the hotter ones. I was happy to see they make use of renewable energies here with these polycrystalline solar panels. But there is no cell phone reception here, at least with my uh, provider T-Mobile and Verizon. Um, and this payphone doesn't seem to work either so get ready to unplug from society for a few hours and just enjoy it of course you're gonna want to bring a bathing suit if it's after dark well you can just use your birthday suit they have a unisex changing cabin available um, but there's just curtains that divide the changing stalls and there was only like two or three when I was there if you plan to stay for more than a few hours, I suggest you bring in your own food. But keep in mind, food is only allowed in the picnic areas. There is a limited concession with beverages available, such as like soda, water, and then um, sometimes iced coffee. But I recommend bringing in a gallon jug of water from the grocery store with you. You're gonna go through a lot of water. There were no showers, but I felt like the water was clean enough to not feel like I needed a shower when I was leaving. Your mileage may vary. There's provided bathrooms, but they're about 100 meters walk up a hill. I gotta say, the view is beautiful from these bathrooms. And they're very clean, very neat bathrooms. They're all contemporary updated. You can also get a massage for $55 for a half hour or for an hour is only 80 bucks. There's also some hiking trails that connect to the hot springs. Um, I actually saw a couple hiking through this direction and they didn't go through the pay station. So here's some tips on how to plan. Keep in mind, they take only cash. Uh, it's $15 per person. They don't rely on plastic cards for payment. There's no alcohol permitted and no glasses permitted on site. Like I said, bring your own water. They do offer some bottled water for $3 a bottle. You're going to go through lots of water, so I suggest you bring a, a gallon jug from the grocery store. I also recommend chewing up in the early morning to avoid the crowds. Don't forget to bring your own towel, but you can rent a towel for $2. I would also recommend bringing water sandals. The rocks can be slippery and the sand and pebbles are not soft. Also, this is a big one. If you're going to be staying there late, bring a flashlight or a headlamp. There are no lights provided in this place, so it can get really dark at night, especially when you're walking up those stairs. If you're like me and you want to listen to some music or podcasts, don't forget to bring a Ziploc bag in case you accidentally drop your phone into the water. I'd recommend Bluetooth headphones in particular because you can seal the bag that way. There's no wire coming out. And a lot of times you can use the touch screen through the Ziploc bag. Beware, after dark, people like to go there nude. Clothing is optional after dark and children are not allowed after the sun goes down. It can get really crowded in the busy season, but if you want to go during a quiet time, try Mud Week in April. The locals will be gone and there won't be that many tourists. Just make sure you got a 4x4 truck to get you up there. Be aware there is no overnight parking permitted and there is no RV parking available. But they do provide lodging options that include uh, tent camping from $65 a night to covered wagons to rustic cabins up to $175 a night for the train caboose. I hear the rustic cabin has a deck complete with log furniture and a gas grill. It's open all year round, Sunday through Thursday, 10 a.m. to 10.30 p.m., but there's no entry after 9.30 p.m. Friday and Saturday, 10 a.m. to midnight, no entry after 10.30 p.m. So go ahead and call this number and uh, make some reservations if you want to get some lodging. The weekend reservations require a two-night minimum stay. You check in at 5 p.m., you check out at 11 a.m. Whether you're passing through Steamboat Springs, Colorado, or it's your destination, I highly recommend visiting Strawberry Park Hot Springs. The town of Steamboat Springs is a few miles away and has what looks to be a lively nightlife, 
So that's also available among quite a few dining options. If you like this video, click like, and I hope you get to enjoy the springs just like I did.